Vikas, I was really looking forward to this interview with you. Um, I'm looking just, forward just to it. Too. Yes, yes. Just as a general background for all our listeners, um, I first met Vika. I think now is going on to two years ago in a conference. And um, the first time I, I I saw you, I met you. What you were on stage and you were talking about one of my favorite subjects, uh, wisdom. And I and and I was I was. I was so pleased that not not just the, the fact that you were talking about it, but also how you approach the subject. Because every time I, I've thought about how to talk about this subject, it has always felt to me like a like a little bit of a of a soft topic. I'm not sure um, if, that, if that makes any sense. Um, but the way you presented it, it was like strong and powerful, um, and I was really impressed. And I thought, wow, this this guy has got something. Um, to communicate, um, and and look at it, look at us. Two years later, I have the pleasure of of uh, of talking to you, um, of interviewing you, and not only that, I consider you a friend because we've met after that a few times, and we have spent quite a few conversations together. So I have a pleasure, it is truly my pleasure to 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 bring you um, to our audience. I have a little bit of a bio of you here. Okay. I want to read up on it a little bit. Um, you have been called the world's number one wisdom coach, and, and this is correct in my in my point of view too. The top wisdom and wealth guru and the Steve Jobs of wisdom. That, that's a that's a nice call. And you are the creator of Meditation Made Simple, a coaching program that has been taught in over fifteen countries. And Vikas is respected as one of the world's leading teachers of wisdom meditation and mindfulness all favorite subjects of mine that is really good and um you have coached leading corporations like rolls royce uh, procter and gamble siemens nike uh, what else have you've got a, a very long list but those are the, the biggest that i recognize there but i'm sure that you're busy with other ones but you have a mistake here in your bio because he says Vikas Markani is a wisdom and wealth coach I think Vikas Malkan is, is the wisdom of wealth coach. To be honest. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> a good I suggestion, have... <laughs> Peter. I'll make sure that my team corrects that. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so the world's number one wisdom of wealth coach. So I think the first question that I have to ask you, Vikas, is what is wisdom? All right. And that's, uh, I think that's a great place to start, Peter, because yes. a lot of people somehow unconsciously they understand the importance of wisdom, but they do not have a clear uh, conscious understanding of what it is. So the way I like to explain it to people is by giving them an analogy. Now think of your life as a car. And let's say you have a great life. Let's say you have a great car. Let's say you have a Ferrari. So it looks beautiful and it can perform beautifully, but it will only perform based on the engine that it's got. So in other words, the performance of the Ferrari doesn't come from the body of the Ferrari. It comes from the engine of the Ferrari. So the car is your life, but the engine is your mind. So the quality of your mind decides or creates the quality of your life. However, an engine is only as good as the fuel that drives it. So if I have a Ferrari with the Ferrari engine, but I put in substandard fuel in it, then that engine is not going to get me very far. And the fuel that we put into the engine is wisdom. So the car is my life. The engine that drives the car is my mind. And the fuel that drives the engine is wisdom. So to put it very simply, what is wisdom? Wisdom is what your mind works on. It's what your mindset is created on. It's your understanding of life, of yourself, of others, and of the big picture that we are all a part of. So that is wisdom. It's about how your mindset is developed, how life functions, who you are, and what other people are around you. That, that, that's, that's lovely. Um, see, one of the, the problems with, with um, this society that we live in is that from, from my perspective is that we have managed to idolize the, the brain instead of taking care of the mind or, and mm -hmm. the heart. Um, so we have fed, we, we've put the, the, the left, you know, the left brain 
in charge instead of allowing the right brain in charge. But to, to be honest, we have learned on how to acquire a lot of knowledge. We, we're really good at it. And that is a good thing because it allows us to build things. It, allow, it has allowed a lot of the advancements in communication and in technology, which is great. We have a very cushy life as a result, which is nice. And, but there's something missing. I think a lot of people that have got something missing, as, as you know, because I'm an, uh, in, in the field of well-being and, and mental health. And, you know, mental health is going in a very interesting way. It's going a medical way. And I think that's the wrong way at heart because what you talk about, that fuel, that's missing in people. And it doesn't matter. You can medicate people, but that's not going to return the fuel. And what's that fuel for you? How, how, yeah, how uh, do you get you know, that fuel, Vika? Yeah. You know, when, uh, Peter, you know, the world recognizes you as an, as, as an expert and authority on mental health. And I want, to, I want to go back to that subject and just talk about how perhaps, possibly, we have not understood mental health correctly. And therefore, we are not, we are not able or empowered to really benefit from our own knowledge about it. So let me, let me put it to you this way. The oldest understanding of the human being, of human life on our planet comes from the, comes from the field of meditation, which actually talks about the fact that the thoughts that you have in your mind, whatever I think all day in my mind, literally changes everything else in my body, in my system. So if I am producing a lot of negative thoughts, and I'm not even aware of that, I'm going to produce thousands of these thoughts every day. And as a result of those repeated negative thoughts, my body is going to respond chemically. So the chemicals in my body, the chemical composition of my entire body begins to change based on the thoughts that I repeat in my head. And of course, we have understood this and science also uh, validates it that when the chemical composition of the body is changed, a person feels differently. In other words, we are chemical human beings. But before we are chemical human beings, we are all human beings of thought. And meditation, the wisdom that I use in my life to coach people and companies like the ones you mentioned, Rolls Royce, or whether uh, you know it's companies uh, as, as a whole or it's the CEOs of the companies. The wisdom that I use says that by understanding how your mind functions and training your mind to be more positive, to be more peaceful, you will not only see benefits in your mental health, but also in your physical health and then in the health of your company. So I'm in an alignment with you that mental health or just studying the brain is not enough. We have to understand about how the mind of the human being functions. Absolutely. And you know what? The, the, the interesting thing is now we have decades uh, of research indicating that meditation is actually very, very useful in the way it operates in the brain, but not just for healthy people, but also for people that are unwell. And there's good recovery, um, uh, recovery results that people have had because of that. Um, would you say that meditation is the wisdom or is meditation the the methodology of putting the fuel into your mind or how exactly does it work? I mean, could there be somebody that does a lot of meditation and yet they're fairly, what would you call it? Stupid. What's the opposite of, of wisdom? <laughs> you know. uh, yeah, I call it, I call it unawareness, you know, stupid. Un is unawareness. A, you're, you're, you're very word and it's, a, it's a loaded <laughs> word. So I call it unawareness or unconsciousness. <laughs> But meditation is not wisdom. Meditation is a means or an instrument mm -hmm. of wisdom. So we meditate to understand more and we meditate to bring the wisdom into our life. In fact, the way I coach people, the way I teach in my Meditation Made Simple program, which you mentioned, I, one of the first core teachings is that there are three parts of your journey to growth or your journey in personal development. And those three parts, the first one is wisdom. It's about understanding who you are and how the world around you functions. And the second part is the tools and techniques of meditation. And the third part or the third anchor is then the actual application of that. So the three parts are first an understanding of wisdom for which obviously I need a coach or a teacher uh, or, or some sort of a, you know, in ancient times they would call them gurus, but today the word is very misunderstood. So I need some sort of a mentor or a coach, a wisdom coach, and then 
I need to understand the techniques of meditation. And then the third, uh, third element is that I need to apply it or practice it in my life. And that's when my life begins to change. So wisdom is what I would say is the mother and meditation or mindfulness is simply the offspring or the child of wisdom. Great. And how would you, I mean, one of the things that people normally say in their field when faced with this kind of talk, which I think it's very, it's healthy and it's wise talk, um, but one of the, the, the um, obstacles, objections, that's the right word that I was looking for, or the objections that they say is, but you know what, um, I don't, re I'm not really in control of my thoughts, they just happen, I have a lot of thoughts in there. How, how, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, so when I hear this all the time, Peter, and uh, when people actually say that to me, I'm not in control of my thoughts. My answer to them is simply this, that itself is a thought. The fact that you're saying I'm not in control of my thoughts is a thought itself. And as long as you hold on to that thought, as long as you choose it, you do control your thoughts. But choosing that thought is not the right decision because it brings with itself the opposite of empowerment. In other words, you become a victim and you say, well, I can't do anything about what's going on. So what we need to do is to flip that thought to saying, I can be in control of my thoughts. I can choose my thoughts and go from I can to I will to I do. So that's how we progress. But we always have a right to choose how we think. Let's go back a little bit. Let's think of a child who has just been born, a newborn baby. A newborn baby has no particular way of thinking. In fact, they don't have a mindset yet. Mm. One of the famous lines is that every child is born with a mind, but not a mindset. That's a mind up later on. And a mindset is developed essentially based on the experiences that we have with the circumstances we are surrounded by. And that's called conditioning. So my circumstances and my conditioning creates my mindset. People coming from different parts of the world have a different way of thinking because that conditioning and the circumstances as I grew up created that mindset for me, which today rules my life. Here's the truth. Every human being, you, I, and every person listening in the audience is driven by their own thoughts. But the question is, where do our thoughts come from? And you realize that if you go back and just study the life of any given person, our thoughts are created from the time when we were young all the way to where we are today. So essentially my life experience and the conditioning of my life has created my thoughts or my mindset. And today my mindset rules my life. Changing what I believe about the world literally changes my mindset and therefore it'll change everything else in my life. Is that, I mean, that's beautiful. And I, and I really connect with it. I'm sure our audience also connects with that. But uh, I'm just wondering, is that because you have had such an easy life because that it's easy for you to do that or is that something that you have had to work on yes well uh, most people would think that because when they see me today you know i'm 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 always yeah. happy always smiling and uh, i'm always peaceful i'm traveling the world i'm coaching the top people in the world i'm coaching the top companies in the world i'm meeting amazing people like yourself uh, so people think I've always had it easy, but uh, if they only study my life, they'll realize that's not the truth. We have all gone through our ups and downs. Uh, at the age of 29, I went through a great inner awakening and I, you know, I had uh, many inner experiences. Uh, I had this epiphany, a wake up call and awakening and enlightenment moment as people call it. But that changed my life completely at the age of 29 and that inspired me to start a whole new life. So I quit as the CEO of a multi-million dollar company and I walked away and I started my new business, which is called Soul Center, and I became a wisdom coach. And even my life before that, for the 10 years before that, in fact, from the time when I was 14 till the time I was 29, I was on a search, I was on a quest for wisdom. Because Peter, at the age of 14, I had seen extremes of life. I had seen the extremely successful. I had seen the extremely wealthy people because that was the circle I moved with. And I had also seen immense suffering and unhappiness inside the same human being. In other words, I saw people who were successful on the outside, but very unsuccessful and unhappy on the inside. I saw people who were literally pretending to be what they were not. So a person was not authentic. On the outside, there was 
happiness and smiles and laughter and jovialness. But in a moment of quiet, this person had extreme stress and unhappiness and regret. And I began to question as a 14 year old boy uh, that this is not how life should be. We must be happy. We must be peaceful all the time, not once in a while. And that brought me to a great understanding, which today is one of my favorite quotes. It's called wealth without wisdom is failure. And wisdom without wealth is frustration. So you need both, essentially. You need that external success, but you need to couple it with your inner happiness and that inner peace. And that's what I do now. So I bring it to people in a very practical manner. My life has gone through ups and downs. And that's what took me on the search of wisdom because I realized that wisdom is the only cure. There is nothing else. There's nothing else that will bring peace and stability and happiness to a human being on a consistent basis. It's not other people, it's not relationships, it's not business, it's not your results, it's not the, the bank account that you own, it's not even your health because all of those things will go up and down, up and down, up and down. The only thing that is yours to keep forever, a treasure that can never be taken away is wisdom. Acquire wisdom, optimize your life. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it, I, guess, I guess the challenge because it's like, like you can be fine. And I think most, most of us, you know, we're fine most of the time. Um, those of us that are more lucky, some of us are not good most of the time. And then we have moments of happiness. But, you know, the majority of people, they're fine most of the time. And then without their doing, something happens or something changes within them. So it's hard to be happy all the time. And, and is it even reasonable to be happy all the time? I, I don't think you've been ecstatically happy. Do you? What, what do you, can you elaborate right. on that a bit more? Yeah, you see, look, here's the thing, right? We live in a world yeah. we cannot control. We can't. We live with people that we cannot control. True. You cannot control every result of every action that you take. Right? No matter who you are, you could be the, the president of a country, or you could be Peter, or you could be Vikas, or you could be anybody. You cannot control your external world. The Isn't only that scary? Control, the only thing that you can control is your responses to it. And your responses begin by how you think about what's happening around you. And that's where wisdom says to you, that if you want to maintain inner harmony, if you want to maintain your peace, if you want to maintain your status of equanimity, if you want to have that happiness, and happiness is not ecstasy. You know, happiness is a state of inner contentment, inner peace, inner empowerment. If you want to have that, then the only way that you will accomplish that goal is to acquire wisdom, to have those tools and techniques and practice those. And once you do that, no matter what goes on around you, you still are in control of your own life and of the way you are feeling because our feelings are not connected to what's around us. I give you an example of this, Peter, just to make it even simpler for our, re, uh, for our listeners. Yep. Let's say that I'm running a company because a lot of people that I coach are business people. I'm, I'm called a wisdom and wealth coach because I coach companies to increase their profits and I coach people on how to become multimillionaires. So my... My point is this, right? Let's say you're running a business. You have a great team in place. You've got enough capital. You have a great idea. And you do everything that you can to achieve your targets at the end of the year, your yearly targets. In spite of that, in spite of the fact that for all the year, it's looked like you're just going to achieve your targets, on the fourth quarter, there's a world event. Something happens. And suddenly, because the world event affects the world economies, everything goes down, people tighten their belts, nobody spends money, you don't meet your targets. Now, you did everything you possibly could, but in the end, you didn't meet your targets. Does that necessarily mean that you're going to be unhappy or that you're going to get depressed or that you're going to be agitated? The answer is no. It all depends on how you respond to that or how you process that external result. So if I take that, as I've done my best, I did whatever was possibly in my hands 
And now the fact that the economy changed and I couldn't achieve my targets gives me feedback on how I can do it better the next time around. Then suddenly this has been a good event for me. However, if I take it to be as if it's a personal failure, even though I did the world events, then yeah. that personal failure can not only make me very negative, it can make me very irritable, it can make me a grouch, it can make me a very grumpy person, but it can also, if I keep on feeding my mind on it, it can also bring me to a state of depression. Because I have coached people who have been in depression and often the depression is caused by one or two or three negative thoughts that keep on getting repeated and then become with what I call the snowball effect. You know, one thought leads to another, to another, to another. And before I know it, nothing in my life is right and I'm feeling overwhelmed and I just give up. And there you go, I'm in depression. And, and you can't sleep and uh, everything becomes worse. I, I guess, I, guess uh, I mean, the majority of the people that I've worked with, um, they understand that intellectually. Like they say, yeah, I, I'm, we're on board. You know, that obviously the way we would like to be able to react. But the reality is that even if I believe it, you know, the people around me might not believe it. I may lose my job because, you know, competitors or competitors may, may take over the market or competitors within my, my, my company may, 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 may do things and I, they get rid of me or I lose the job and I can't pay my mortgage or, the worst fear of all people, I may end up in the street. So that's got nothing to do with how I feel on the inside, but that may still happen on the outside. What would you say to people saying that? Because right. I'm sure they so have that one before. Yeah, sure. Here's the first thing, right? Uh, in my example, when I mentioned that it's a global event, the world economies are affected. If my company has been affected and we didn't meet our targets, the chances are even my competitors, competitors did not meet their targets, right? Because it's a global yeah, event. Sure. Yeah. So it's an event which affects everyone. So that's my first, uh, first case, uh, first point that I want to make. The second point is this. You know, when you say that, what if, my, what if I lose my job? It's a what if question. A what if question always has the other flip side. What if you don't? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so here comes a the question. Then why are we focusing on the negative 50% rather than the positive 50%? Good point. Why and again, <laughs> because... We have to train our mind to focus on the positives, on the possibilities, on the potential, rather than the problems. So we understand. That sounds like, like work, though, doesn't it? No, it's actually fairly easy. Once you get your training, it's, it's, it's really a simple task. Oh, but for yeah. anything in the beginning, you have to put in some time and some effort. Here's the deal, Peter. A great life, a happy life, a good life, a positive life is a great treasure. And to get any great treasure requires a little bit of work. Now, the more coaching you get, the easier the work is because a good coach will teach you exactly how to do the things the right way. Do you see? And, and here's another fact. So that would be my second point. My first point would be a global event would affect everyone, including my competitors. So why am I thinking I'm the only guy suffering? That's a wrong way of thinking. The second would be that, you know, if it's a what if question that has the flip side to it, what if I don't get fired? What if I get promoted? Because they saw how much I worked and how well I did it. So there's always a what if on the positive side. Let's focus on that one. Here's the third element. Let's say even if I'm fired. Again, my point is, how do I respond to that? Because if I'm fired is another external event that I did not control. And now I respond to it by saying, oh my God, that's it. My life is over. I'll never find another job. Can you see how negative the thoughts are in the mind? On the other yeah. hand, I could think, well, I'm being fired because this company doesn't respect my value. I've done my best all year. I've given my 110% to this company. The result is because of something I didn't control. And they still want to fire me. Certainly, this is not a company I want to work for. I'm going to find a better company to work for. I'm going to take my talent somewhere else. Or, you know what? I'm going to actually finally decide to follow my own dreams and start in my own company and become an entrepreneur. There you go. You do a startup, you get Vikas Malkani as your coach. Next, you know, you're getting external funding and you're on your way to being a DECA millionaire. That, uh, I, think, I think everybody that is listening to you right now, Vika, would agree with me that, yes, that's the person I want to be. <laughs> that is exactly the person I want to be. So yeah. How do we get there? Yeah, Peter, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. 
here's a line that I want you to remember. It's it's on my books. It's in my it's it's on my you know my my center. You are the author of your own life story. All of us are writing our own life story. Some of us realize it. Some of us don't. And we are writing it in every minute based on how we respond to what life brings us. Because none of us can control life. But in how we respond to what life brings us, we are writing the story of our life. We are the authors of our own life story. That's nice. That, that's lovely. And uh, I believe that not only, you mentioned there's something really interesting. You talked about wisdom and then you linked it with wealth. Um, yes. I, I, I have known a lot of wise people that were not very wealthy. They yep. were not hungry, they were not hungry, but they were not necessarily wealthy. But you've mm-hmm. linked it both. Can I, can I just have a couple of minutes of explanation for the, for the benefit of all their audience? Yes. Uh, you, you know, this is a favorite question. I love this question and thank you for asking me this. Uh, here's the thing, right? If I get wisdom, it allows me to be happy, peaceful. It allows me to be a person of stability. It allows me to be a person who is able to help others. But if I cannot take this wisdom and apply it to my own fulfillment, I'm never going to be a full human being. I'm going to be only a half human being. I live in two worlds. All of us do. The inner world and the outer world. I live in this inner world of my thoughts, my emotions, my feelings. I need to get that right. And that comes through wisdom. But then I live in the second world, which is the external world, the world of economies, the world of society, the world of relationships, the world of families, the world of buying and selling. Everything on our planet today really is a transaction. Sure. You go to a restaurant, you order a meal, you got to pay for it. Let's say you, th- you sit at home all day and you decide to do nothing and you say to yourself, you know what, today I'm just gonna stay in my home, not even go out and I'm not gonna spend any money at all. In fact, I won't even get online and order anything, let's say from Amazon. So I won't spend any money at all. So you spend all day just lazing around, sleeping, relaxing in your house, watching TV. Have you spent money on that day? And the answer is yes, because you're paying rent for the apartment that you're living in. Absolutely. You know, you're yeah. paying income tax for that day of the year. Mm. You're paying electricity bills. If you're watching that's TV, depressing. License. that's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a fact. That's a fact. It is a fact. Absolutely. You know, every day of our life, we are spending money whether we like it or not. So we have to find a means or a way of earning that wealth so that my external life can also be lived masterfully. And I use wisdom to help people to become successful and significant. It's not just about wealth, but I say you must take it one step beyond. We create wealth first. We create that external business success, individual success first so that the wealth comes in. But then after that, for the people that I coach who are already multimillionaires, and I even coach some families which have billion dollar networks, billion dollar networks, I always say, now it's time for you to take it one step forward. We go from success to significance. And then we even talk about legacy because life requires four things. My program, Peter, you know, you may be aware of this is called the life wisdom matrix. That's the program that I created under which all of my teachings and my coaching falls, the life wisdom matrix. And here's the core principle of the life wisdom matrix. Life is like a table that needs four legs to be stable. Life is like a table that needs four legs to be stable. The first leg is happiness, success, significance, and legacy. So you have four things that you need to make your whole life complete. And we use wisdom for everything because wealth is good because you need the wealth to become significant in your life. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. (coughs) You, you, you want to have that security. Absolutely. Uh, look, this is, this is fantastic. Um, and uh, I don't want uh, uh, one, of, one of the things that I know is that you do have one day that you put on for free for people, don't they? They're so they can come and, and listen to you on this matter of, of wealth, wisdom, and uh, winning, I believe, isn't it? Yes. Wealth, wisdom, and winning? <laughs> am I, am I do, oh, I'm not doing it right. Wealth, wisdom, and winning. Wealth, wisdom, and winning. Um, 
So there are one days. I know that you're coming to Australia, but you're, you've also done some in Singapore. Um, where else have you done that? Uh, we have done programs in the uh, Philippines, in Singapore, multiple programs. We are taking the program now to Australia. We'll be in Bali soon. We'll be Bali. in UK. We'll be in Dubai. So we are, you know, we started it only a few months ago, but it's, uh, it's becoming a global brand and we're getting invitations from all over to come and to be coaching people there. And uh, talking about Wealth Wisdom Winning, it was a concept that I came up with a few months ago. And then I partnered with a wonderful gentleman from... Uh, He's American, but he lives in the Philippines. His name is John Rankins. He's known as the millionaire maker. And he started life from welfare and he's now a multimillionaire. So, you know, the world's number one wisdom coach and the millionaire maker, we sort of got together. And uh, we came up with this idea of taking wisdom to the world to be able to create external wealth and to be able to live life like winners. So that's where the idea of wealth wisdom and winning comes from. So we launched in August uh, 2018, and uh, you know we have we have already done multiple programs in the Philippines and in Singapore. Very successful. We have had breakthroughs. We have got people, you know, saying that we have changed their lives. We have turned around their businesses, and now we are coming into Australia. So in uh, in February of 2019, uh, Wealth Wisdom Winning is coming to Australia. We'll be doing events in multiple cities uh, in Melbourne, Sydney. Gold Coast and Brisbane. And uh, we would also be coming in for a two day coach. So people come for a free event. It's a three hour free event where John Rankins and I, Vikas Malkani, will be coaching them for free completely. Uh, once they come in and they feel that they're getting the value and they want to be coached by us, then we bring them in for a two day mastermind program. Sounds great. Sounds great. But this is not just for people that have good businesses, is it? Uh, it's for people uh, who want to start businesses, who want to grow their businesses, or people in jobs and they are wanting to come out of the corporate life and they want to start something of their own. They want to have a sense of freedom and empowerment. It's for those type of people, but it's also for people who just want a better life, who believe in personal development, who want to go to the next level of their own potential. It's for everyone, anyone who values happiness or success. Anyone who wants to grow their life or their business, that's what it's for. Because what I do is I share wisdom to win the game of life and the game of business. Brilliant. You had me at hello, Vikas. This is fantastic. <laughs> I was just wondering, this is, this is gold, and, and I wish um, more people watch this video and they do come to see that program, the one-day program, and hopefully join, join us for the mastermind. Because uh, I, I'm wondering, what's the one thing you would like people to take away from, from our interview today? Uh, the one thing, the one lesson, if, if they don't hear the whole interview or if they hear it and forget everything else we have shared, the one lesson I want everyone to remember is that we are the authors of our own life story. We are creating our life. Life is what we make it to be. It's not written down. It's not predestined. It's not on the lines on your head or on the lines of your hands, or it's not written up there in the sky somewhere. We are writing the story of our life every day, every day, every day as we live. And we are writing it by the thoughts we have and the actions we take. So the one answer, the one lesson, the one teaching that I want everyone to live with is that we are the authors of our own life story. Get wisdom into your life and start to write the story that you love. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's exactly the philosophy and the approach of the Workplace Mental Health Institute on how we approach all things mental health, all things mental health, from workplace, from personal, from life and resilience. And uh, uh, we're very happy to be collaborating and, and partnering together for these events in Australia, maybe <laughs> the world, who knows. It is the beginning, but we're very excited, Vikas, to, to be on board with you and to continue uh, an expansion. What is an expansion of, of, of a lifelong friendship, really? And uh, thank you very much for being here in, uh, in this interview. And um, well, we'll keep going. And everybody, please... Uh, we will send an email if you want to receive our magazines. We will let you know uh, when Vikas and John and John Rankins will be here talking about what, what is, what, uh, wisdom, wealth, and winning. Is that is that the correct right. order? 
Okay. Uh, we call it wealth, okay. wisdom, and winning because wisdom is is in the center. Wisdom is the right. core. Well, uh, wisdom uh, is what keeps everything together. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Wealth, wisdom, and winning. Well, that's very good. Thank you very much, because Thank you, Peter. And it's wonderful talking to you. And uh, you know, I'm 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 more than happy to see your tribe and your family at our events. And uh, we'll reach out to them through you, and we'll make sure that uh, you know they are benefited. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>